Hey everybody, and welcome to the latest episode of the Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brun. On this episode, I'm really excited to welcome back none other than Mr. Vinnie Vinton himself. Vinnie was kind enough to spend over two hours with me talking about everything that had to do with the Kiss Creatures of the Night album, the recording of it, the songwriting, the tour, the rehearsals, the photo shoots, and much, much more. During the first 20 minutes or so, Vinnie will give us an insight to what was going on in his life just prior to getting that call to come write some songs with Kiss. We'll also hear during that time what famous female singer did Vinnie Vinton actually audition for slightly before he started writing with Kiss. We'll also get to hear what did Vinnie really think about Kiss prior to joining the band, what songs did he play on on Creatures of the Night, which classic era Kiss song did he like performing the most, and so much more. I really hope you enjoy this. As you'll hear when you're listening to it, Vinny was having some bad weather where he lived, and there was one time we got cut off, and there's a couple of times there's slight little wobbles in the sound. But don't worry, there's absolutely nothing missing, and 99.9% .9 of the interview is crystal clear, and I know you guys are going to enjoy it. So, without further ado, let me start playing for you my interview with none other than Vinny Vincent talking about the Creatures of the Night era. Thank you, Vin, again for doing this with me. Obviously, we chatted, uh, I guess, a couple of months ago when I was at the Christmas party, and um, I'm really looking forward to this chat. And you know, we were going to talk about, I guess, pretty much everything creatures at a night. But before I do that, I just wanted to kind of mention. Obviously, in the news yesterday it was announced that Neil Pert had passed away. I'm sure you've seen that. Did you know him at all? I didn't know Neil, but I saw that, and it was, uh, you know, just sobering, very sad news. Yeah. And uh, this is where we are now. Sadly, and, yeah. Uh, and that's why I'm, I am, I think it's really important now to milk every single fucking minute we've got. Just milk it. Enjoy this, this, this life while we have it, you know? Oh, absolutely. And uh, this is one of the reasons I'm doing my, sh my parties, you absolutely. know? What's important to me now is enjoyment fun enjoyment fun enjoyment it's not there's there's not about money it's not about anything but i really want to have some good a good time with with my with, with people i enjoy playing for you know oh, and this is this is major major important to me so you know i already got a career so Vinnie vincent doesn't need to prove that part this is my part of my life right right now where I get people like you, my, my and the people I, I I love to play for. We get together and it's uh, it's just it's a party on the and it's and fun and, 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 and there's no oh, oh. there's no big hype because I I fucking hate hype. I hate I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Yeah. So what's important to me right now is low key, understated. You know, show up and. Let's let's have fun, make the experience happen, and one day, like uh, like everything in life, all good things come to an end. And when this ends, it it'll be, to, you know, for the people that were actually there, you know, let a few years go by, and somebody will probably say to themselves, "Did that really happen? Wow, I can't believe I spent this time with Vinnie Vincent, and this was a party, and." You know, we did this, we did that, and it was just intimate. And did we really do that? Did that really happen? You know? Absolutely. But this is what I'm doing now, and I love everything. Awesome. No, no, and no. you were there, and I thank you for coming. And uh, the reason I'm giving you these interviews is because I think you're a great guy, and I, I love talking to you, and you're very respectful. And uh, all that, all that, you know? Awesome. No, thank you, Vinny. I appreciate that. Yeah, and I, you know, I had a great time yeah. at the Christmas party, and um, you know, I look forward to hopefully attending a couple more events in the future. So, you know, you're you're my kind of guy. You know, you're from you're from the Northeast. You know, from the tri-state, and so we share all, a lot of that that kind of thing in common. And you know, your your old school stuff, and I love that. You know, you're not some hotshot idiot that's trying to make points for himself and blow hard who thinks he's more important than the artist, you know? 
And I said, Mikey's my guy, man. Get Mikey on the phone. Let's, 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 I'm going to give Mikey my best. You know? Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, Vince. So let's jump in. So, you know, like we said, we're going to talk a lot of uh, Creatures of the Night era today. And I guess where I want to uh-huh. start was maybe let's start, I guess, the first few months before you got the call from Kiss. So what was going on in the life of uh, Vincent Cusano, I guess, at that time? And what was going on in your life before you got that call from Kiss in, in 82? got the call it it's you know you're asking a question that has a thousand images to it (laughs) a thousand thoughts Mm -hmm. a thousand lives that were that was that that were morphing metamorphosing very quickly you know so it, it is not the easiest thing to boil it down and laser beam it into one thought so uh, you asked a big, gigantic general question. You want to, you want to like chop that up into a few little pieces and, and we could kind of create the bigger picture. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess the recording for the album had started in the summer of 82. I'm assuming you were writing before that. We know that you were working with treasure. Before you were in kiss. Oh, um, was it, was it 82? Was yeah. it right? You, know, yeah, yeah. you probably know more than I do. Was it 1982? <laughs> yes, it was the summer of 82. When, I don't uh, think so. Uh, yeah. Summer... I don't, don't okay. think <laughs> what, what, what are you thinking, Vin? I don't think it was summer of 82. I think it was... Was it 80? It could be right. <laughs> you actually could be right. What the hell do I know? Well, you know, you, you lived it. I read about it every day. You lived it, so you were just living oh, well, the you moment. you read about it, you That's know. right. People that, that is, you know, the people that digest this stuff on a, you know, on a, you know, microscopic level, they, they know all the detail. You know, me, I just, it's, it's not, it wasn't that important, you know, uh, all this time later, it really, I don't look at it on a microscopic level, but what sometimes for me, I see it in a, a flashback era, you know, a flashback thing. And wow, let's take 1980 because somewhere between 1980, 1981, I, 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 if I'm not mistaken, I think I started to work. Uh, my introduction to to, to Gene and to Paul, where it was 1981, and I was one driven motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I was driven. I was gonna. I was gonna get where I wanted to go, and there was nothing gonna stop me. You know. Absolutely. And um, I was doing everything under the sun for someone had not two two nickels in their pocket. You know, I was driving a beater, and. I was just doing things that I, I didn't pay attention to anything, you know? Mm-hmm. So I, all I did was play and write and record these terrible sounding demos that, <laughs> you know, was just the best I could do with somebody that, that had nothing, nothing, mm-hmm. no facility, no nothing to do anything with. So I took whatever, uh, whatever, session work, if there was some, you know, I had moved to, to, uh, I moved to Hollywood in summer of 79. Uh, actually I moved there, sorry, summer of 78. And that's really where it all began. And, uh, my first, how I moved to, how you could, because the lead up to 81 was very quick, you know, even though it began in 78. Mm-hmm. It, it was like a fast track, you know, a, a fast forward to 1981. It happened really, really, really fast. And um, in 78, I was working with Danny Hartman. Yep. And the last, it, you know, if you and I are going to continue on a lot of this, I don't want to give a lot of the, the Dan stuff Agreed. The Dan Danny Hartman history away during for this interview, but it's it's in, it's probably more um, appropriate to tie in how all of this began. Otherwise, you're coming into a story and halfway into a movie and you don't know the beginning. Absolutely. And I think the beginning is everything, you know. Yep. But uh, 
1978 saw Vinny Cassano playing uh, with this disco act, and it had had intentionally, uh, unintentionally turned into a disco project, or whatever you want to call this, uh, because Dan on the side had start had recorded a disco a bunch of disco songs which caught on and disco was huge at the time as you, as we all know and it started as a rock band and we had only done a few live shows the one i remember was at Toad's place in New Haven yep and uh and so I, I don't remember much many more live shows if, we, if there ever was one <laughs> mm-hmm. but suddenly it was Hey, uh, hey guys, I got a hit record and it's this thing called Instant Replay and I got, there's no reason, you know, I'm not going to do any more rock. We're going to, I got, I I have to go do these, I have to do these TV shows because do you want to, do you want to just have a band behind me, you know, lip syncing to this song on TV shows? going to go to Europe, going to go to Hollywood, going to do all these TV shows that's everywhere because the song is huge. And, uh, you know, pays 150 bucks a week. And I said, oh, sure, man. I'm mm-hmm. on, man. Are you kidding? <laughs> and and I, I I thought the world of Dan, you know, his talent, he was, he was just fantastic, absolutely fantastic talent. And uh, our last shows were in in Hollywood. And we did, uh, I remember him saying, look, this is our last part of the tour because we had gone to Europe and then we came back to the U.S. and did, you know, went from Connecticut where we were all based to, Mike, we got storms, bad storms over here, really bad. No, no, hey, there's nothing you can do about that. It's not your fault. Yeah, I think it might cut us off, but we'll we'll make it through. So we'll okay. just bear with us. We'll we'll make it happen. Absolutely. So Absolutely. tell me when you're ready to resume, and we're we're doing it. Let Let's go. We could pick it right up right now. 1978 was a, a real key, critical year for me because that was going from hometown Vinny to first time Vinny in Hollywood for real. I had been in Hollywood in 1972 with Little Anthony and the Imperials. That was only six years earlier. Mm -hmm. And it had been maybe a little too early for me to really understand what was actually happening to me because I was playing with uh, the 1950s R&B band and I wanted to be a rocker. You know, in 1972... uh, (laughs) Here I'm. I'm kind of finding myself in a very strange band. You know, great band. I knew all their songs. I loved their songs. But we were playing a lot of, you know, mob clubs, playing uh, Vegas clubs, a lot of Vegas shows. We were end up being residency in Vegas for a while, and I, I actually loved it because it was an experience. But 1978 was. Vinny goes, you know. I guess goes to Hollywood, you know. <laughs> okay. So yeah. I'm in Hollywood, and Dan says, "Well, this is the end of our tour. This is it. You know, I can give you a ticket back home, or the equivalent of 150 bucks in cash. What do you want to do?" But the tour's over. We did all these TV shows. We did American Bandstand, Midnight Special. The Dinosaur Show, mm-hmm. and we're doing all these these TV shows. I'm going, wow, this is really great. I don't want to go home, you know. I want to <laughs> stay true. out here and see if I can make it. That was 1978, so that that changed the whole picture. It went from hometown to okay, I'm going to try to really, I don't care what it's going to take, what I got to do. I'm going to be here, and I'm going to hope that I can, you know, find a place for me. Uh, wasn't easy. Let me tell you, mm-hmm. taking buses everywhere, but I loved it. I loved every second of it. Okay. Taking buses, looking at these music scene magazines and seeing a thousand bands a week. It seemed like 
playing everywhere and bands looking for members and I you know <laughs> went from there's you know like nothing available for a musician to here's a thousand bands looking for a thousand musicians it sure seemed like it and there were more clubs to play in than than I know what to do with a friend of mine from Connecticut said uh hey why don't you sleep on my floor for a while? But I was sleeping on a lot of people's floors that I didn't even know, <laughs> mm-hmm. but that was how, how, how people were back then. And, uh, it, you know, the Hollywood in, in that, that era, and especially Southern California in that area were, were just so rich with, with bands and, and writers and songwriters and, you know, the, the, the saturation was uh, of of music and creating, you know, like musical creations where it was so fantastic. And there was publishing contracts that people were trying to get and, you know, co- record deals that people were trying to get. And it was just out there for the taking. So all you had to do was be hope that, you know, the fates connected you to the right people. And I did everything I could, just everywhere, everyone, everyone, everywhere, any mm-hmm. anything right, right. that could tie me and my talent to anything that would take me from, uh, you know, from point A to point B and maybe a little farther, you know. Absolutely. I was always looking for... I want to be in the biggest band in the world, you know, and how do I do this? I don't know. Maybe it'll never happen. I don't know, but I'm driven enough. You know, I'm, I, there was nothing going to stop me as far as, uh, my desire, my, my drive, my talent, whatever I was trying to create, nothing was going to stop that, you know, it was just, that's how I am as a person. Right. Right. Uh, that, that's what I'm made up of. You're not going to stop me if this is what my goal is. There's nothing going to change that goal. Nothing. Right. right. So this was the uh, late. The I'm going to get 70s. there one way or another. Absolutely. So this is the late '70s, I guess, for you, and right into the early '80s. How did Kiss first contact you? And were you a fan of their music at all before they? I'm assuming you were aware of their music, but were you a fan of their music before they contacted you? What was that? You're a little garbled. What was that? Yeah. No, I said you know you, you're talking the late '70s. Right. And then Kiss contacted well, you. Well, late 70s, it happened real quick. By the time 1980 happened, it yep. was really quick. Yep. So how, how so did, what was your question, Mike? Yeah. How did Kiss contact you? And were you aware of their okay. music? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hated their music. Hated, wow. okay, hated that's the funny. band. Hated their music. That's so funny. Thought it was just, you know, gimmick. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my ear... You have to understand why I hated them because my ears were not to that sound. Mm -hmm. My ears were tuned to Led Zeppelin. Okay. But anything that didn't sound like like Led Zeppelin was, you know, wasn't wasn't good enough for me. You know, Mm -hmm. hated their guitar player. Mm -hmm. I hated the voice, which was Paul, Mm -hmm. and I thought the songs were terrible. (laughs) So, you know. You want a good interview? This is a good interview. There you go. All right. So then they contact you, and with those feelings that you had... Oh, no, 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 no. It didn't work out like that. It okay, did not work out like that. No. Okay. So the reason why all this pre, pre-Kiss pre story is important because it's the Vinny story that how it all connected. Because the connecting part is really how, how this, this kind of thing ends up happening, you know? And... Um, uh, So here I am driven looking for anything that's going to make me, I don't care if it was the Eagles, didn't have to be anybody, Mm -hmm. didn't have to be Kiss. It was just anything that's going to get me in the biggest band in the world. I don't care who it is, but you know, that's where I want to be. And, uh, you know, you want honesty, this is what you're getting. Okay. This is, this is the Vinny at that time. So, but I was taking anything and it went from the smallest and I figured the smallest is going to take me to the middle ground and maybe the middle ground will take me somewhere else. 
So I ended up uh, working with songwriters, mm-hmm. you know, and the strangest thing is, you know, I like to write songs, you know. I think every guitar player writes songs. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you can be a guitar player without writing some kind of songs, because I think that's how it, it all begins anyway, you know. Uh, but uh, I love songs. And uh, my my upbringing was, you know, with with the radio. So uh, you know, I love radio songs. I, I loved FM songs, and FM was like in the in the '60s. So all of a sudden, you're going from really commercial pop stuff to Cream, Led Zeppelin, Jeff Beck group, all of those those groups that ended up, you know, becoming, you know, non-commercial acts that. Uh, you know, became like, okay, we trans, we translated all of the pop stuff into Marshall Stacks, big groups, big power, Mountain, um, all the groups in between, all those transitional groups, the psychedelic era of 67, 68. Anyway, all of this kind of translated into the next step, then the next step, then the next step. And it was all these, these climbing steps of music changing. So I was changing with it. All my songwriting was changing with everything. So by 79, I couldn't make it in L.A. Funny enough, I was working as a session guitar player for Kim Fowley. Mm-hmm. Now, Kim, Kim was a real Hollywood character. Loved the guy. She was... He was real entertaining, and he was, uh, you know, I was just trying to get a song on a record, you know, to make some money, you sure. know. Like, that to me was like the badge, you know, hey, <laughs> you know, Sheriff in town or, you know, Deputy in town, look at me, I got a badge, I got a song on a record, you know. Absolutely. And that, that to me was what I wanted, you know, just something where, you know, I got a song on a record, and look at me, I'm making a few bucks in royalties. So Kim Fowley was this producer, writer, and he was very talented. Yep. And he ended up, uh, I think he had a band called The Runaways. Exactly, yep. yep. And he was producing them at the, at the time. This was in the late 70s. And so he was putting all these, these little groups of people together. And this was 70, 78. It had to be 78 because that's what I did for six months was work for Kim, mm-hmm. Kim Fowley. And he ended up writing a song for Kiss. And he used to tell me, I wrote a song for Kiss called King of the Nighttime World. Either he wrote it at that time or it hadn't come out yet. I can't re- really remember. Yeah, it had um, come out like two well, years before that. Well, was that when it came out, 76, King of the yeah. Nighttime World? Yep, yep, 76. Okay. okay, so it had come out already. Yep. And so I remember him saying to me in 1978, he says, well, Kiss are looking for songs. I think, wow, man, I could write Kiss songs like all day long. This is easy. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, man, that's funny. <laughs> so, you know, she's got these songwriters, and I'm going, man, I'm better at these songwriters he got. But he says, oh, you just play guitar. I go, okay, fine. So after six months, there was just, I ran out of floors to sleep on, you know, my hundred and fifty dollars I had saved up in my pocket was gone, mm-hmm. um, so I called home and I said, "Can you send me a ticket? <laughs> Can you pay for a plane ticket?" Oh my god, I come home because I, you know, it's just getting there's just nothing here. I'm coming home. Came home, spent six months, six to eight months back back home, which is Bridgeport, Connecticut, yep. which I love, my hometown. Yep, and. Um, I'm looking for a job, looking for a gig, okay? And here we go. But but I hear my my musical idol, which was Edgar Windsor, mm-hmm. was looking for a guitar player and it had come to pass that my my connection with Dan Hartman led me straight to Edgar looking for this guitarist. And to me that was I'm in heaven, man. I'm playing with my my musical idol, you know? Mm-hmm. So we did about six months of live shows. I don't think anything was ever recorded. Uh, I, I think I'm the only one that has actual photos of uh, on stage 
you know, me on stage with Edgar nice. live. Um, it was fantastic. It was utterly fantastic for me. So I think this, the, the, the tour just came to an end, and it was 1979. Mm-hmm. Friend calls me, says, come on back to L.A. I got your place to live. Uh, it's in, right in the middle of Hollywood under the Hollywood sign. And I said, done. I'm there. <laughs> Get on a plane the next day. Got there. I said, man, I'm in Hollywood. Whoa, I'm back. (laughs) Okay, this time, this time I'm not going back. This time I'm going to stay until something really big happens. That's the beginning right there. That's, that is the actual chapter one beginning. Gotcha. And pardon me? No, no, go ahead. Finish. I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, now we're at 1979. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, I'm here. I got all these songs written. I'm good. This is it. I'm going to find what I'm looking for. I'm going to be in the biggest band in the world and nothing's going to stop me. Now I'm back. Now I'm grounded. Now I got a place to live. It was a great place. I loved it. Um, okay. Now, awesome. now I start meeting, uh, it, it was a fast track. Now I'm on the, uh, uh, on the connection with, you know, more, more well-known musicians and starting bands and uh it became whoa i'm really starting to advance things are going at a faster faster pace and i there is <laughs> and i will never forget this man this is this is like one of the the best stories i've ever i've ever remembered okay. um i got a call from a friend of mine who was a uh um an agent at uh William Morris Agency. He said, "Listen, I got a I heard that there's a, a an audition for Cher. She's she needs a guitar player. They're you know putting a band together." And I said, "Oh, wow. You know, mm-hmm. this is big. This is so big, you know." Mm-hmm. He says, "You got to be there tonight at or it's tomorrow night, you know, because I, I had a day. I remember that. I'll be there tomorrow night at SIR in Hollywood. Uh, they're auditioning guitar players. So um, I said, okay, okay. <laughs> you know, and I had just gotten there. I had just gotten there, just gotten mm-hmm. off the plane. Mm-hmm. And so come to, come to, come to the, you know, the next night. Um, I was, I was jet lagged. I was just so tired. I figured, Oh, let me just lay down and go to sleep, you know, so I can be, I can be there, you know, for this audition. And I overslept, you know, Mm. and I missed my slot for the audition. So I, I'm panicked, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm I'm freaking panicked. Mm -hmm. So I call my friend. He says, look, 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 look." he says, relax. I'll pick you up, you know, We'll just go down there. Don't worry about it. Just, just stop freaking out. We'll go down there and mm-hmm. just tell her what happened. To walk in late, I mean, like late, you know, and there's just like a a line of guitar players, just a line of people lined up. And Cher was there. She was just as gracious as ever, you know. And my friend said, uh, here's my friend, Vinny Cassano. And, Sorry we're late. And she said, that's okay. (laughs) And uh, so I said, okay. She said, okay, you want to play some? I said, yeah, 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 whatever you want, you know. And um, she said, okay, great, you know, go ahead. Uh, What do you want to play? I said, I don't care, whatever you want to do. So she had a band that kind of lined up, you know. Uh, People that were, I I think she had, you know, had already picked as a band. They were just filling guitar putting guitar players in the slot. So I played a couple of songs with the band and she says, Hey, listen, can you, can you just kind of stay over here? Like, just come on over here. Just sit and sit in that line or, you know, just come over in this area over here. So, you know, like, like, <laughs> please pick me, you know, I really want to <laughs> do this. Uh, so I'm sitting there like a, like a little dog, like a little puppy, you know, I'm, I'm, okay. Yeah, 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 you know? mm-hmm. And so she just, she tried a few more guitar players and she said, 
uh, I don't know, there was kind of like a long period of not much, you know, it was kind of everything was just you know, like fast forward on this or slow motioning down on the video, it seemed like. Mm-hmm. So she comes back around and says to me, can you come back tomorrow night? I said, of course, you know, anything you want. I said, it was, it was so nice to meet you and thank you for having me. You know, I was like, wow, this is really fantastic. You know, this is like, I finally, you know, finally something like looking hopeful, you know, mm-hmm. And uh, I went home, you know, I'm thinking, well, I'm going to go back the next night. So I went back <laughs> the next night, and she had already found somebody, and I think she was starting to date this guy. I, I can't remember uh, the the scenario, but um, it was like I walk in and like, well, I guess I should just go home. I think she found somebody, you know. Mm-hmm. So I went home, and I was kind of back, really kind of depressed. So I figured, okay, well, now I'm just going to, next, you know, and my, <laughs> friend, and my friend said, look, this is the way it happens here. You just go, go, you pick up the pieces and you just keep going. You know, I said, okay, 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 I got it, I got it. Good. And that's how it really was. And then I started connecting. And then, then I get a strange call from a band. And I'll never forget this. It was a really, really intuitive, it was one of those calls that was like a fateful fate had entered this call. It was from a, a band that had just gotten a record contract on Planet Records. I think it was Planet. And uh, lovely band, lovely bunch of people. I really got along great with them. Just a good singer. Her name was Sue Sad. She was a really, really good, good lead singer, really good. And they, they were a good band. They wrote some really good songs. And they needed a guitarist for the record. And it was a really good match, you know? So I started working with them and recorded this record. They needed some songs. And I said, I got some songs, you know? And I had, we had recorded No Substitute uh, on the eighth day, which was also Boys Are Gonna Rock. Mm -hmm. And there was a version of that that was recorded. And this is all going to be on the on the the record, you know. Mm-hmm. We had really gone through final recordings of all of these songs, and uh, then there was a song called Tears, yep. and I had a version of it, but it didn't seem quite finished. So there was a songwriter that was working with them, also named Adam Adam Mitchell. Yep. And Adam was a real key player in my story, in my in my life, my world, my history. And she said, why don't you get together with Adam? And we did, got together, and Adam was a really good writer. And uh, we had written a couple of things together. And he says, let me show you what I did with Tears. I said, okay, great, let me what you do with it. And he did some nice things with it, I liked it. And we became friends, we had worked a lot together. And so I would go... I would, I would actually go to his house several times a week. Now this is, we're talking probably 250 years ago. So, you know, <laughs> the way I remember things may be a little different than someone else remembers mm-hmm. it, of but course. this is my memory of things, you sure. know, sure, of course. because I remember things, you know, just in pieces and how, how things all came to be, of you know, yep. it may not be exact, but you know, my piecing of all of this together is kind of how I remember things being. Fair enough. So, um, uh, one day he says to me, I'm writing with Gene Simmons from Kiss. I said, wow, <laughs> you know, wow, that's really a big, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. He said, well, you should meet them. You know, I said, really? He said, yeah. Um, because I had played Adam, you know, my, my demo tapes of things that I'd, I'd written. On one of my demo tapes was Back on the Streets. Yep. And, you know, it was a terrible sounding demo of a really great song. So uh, he played it for Gene. And I think this is what I remember happening. It, it, it fell into the hands of... 
It, it either it was, was played for Gene or it was played for Michael ja- Jackson, who was the producer producing Kiss at that time. Yep. So, uh, fast forward a little bit. I got a call from Michael and said, Vinny, I think this is a great song, and Kiss are looking for some great songs, and this one really would be something special, and I'd like you to, to, to meet Gene and Paul and work with them, write with them, and we'll see what we come up with, you know? And I thought, man, am I dreaming, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. this, this, is, this is real, you know? He says, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, the a direction, and I, I have to believe that this was, not, this was definitely nine, early 1981, very early okay. 81. Uh, the reason I remember that is because my kids were still being, they were still embryos at this point. Mm, okay. Um, and so I know this was 81. Okay. Uh, they were a thought of an embryo. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how early this this okay. get together was, and then they became embryos. So, you know, this was definitely <laughs> eighty one. Okay. So, uh, in between all that, now the, the the best part for me still is this is the most fun part I've ever had. Be, between the connection with Kiss and the the auditions with you know all these other other artists was Paramount Paramount uh, Studios, which was uh, the Joni loves Chachi, yeah. Happy Days world of of uh, Gary Marshall shows, and that's when I had probably more fun than I've ever had. So here I am writing for these writing songs with. Uh, one of the with, with the, the music coordinator for that show, who was a really good friend of mine at that time, and I would meet him at the uh, I would meet him at the you know the the set you know Every, I can't remember how many times a week that we met there, but we we ended up writing you know on on the actual Happy Days set itself. Yep. And man, that's when I was thinking, man, I'm having like the, this is the greatest time I'm really having. Okay. It's not what I want to do, obviously, but I'm having this, I'm having like a great time doing this. You know, this is like unheard of for somebody like me from Bridgeport, Connecticut, who's looking for a break to end up doing these weird things that are like so, so fantastic, you know? Absolutely. And, uh, anyway, so in, in all of that comes Chris. And uh, Michael Michael Jackson comes yeah. into the picture and says, um, I want you to write with Gene. I want you to write with Paul. Let's see what we come up with. And one of the reasons why Back on the Streets was the introductory song was because there was a point in early 1981 that Michael or Kiss, I don't know who, but the direction they wanted to take was Waiting for a Girl Like You okay, yep. from mm-hmm. for, by Foreigner. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep, yep. And I just Remember that? that? Absolutely, very well. So, um, that was somewhere in all of that. And uh, so, that okay. began the actual getting together to write songs. And here comes Vinny with my little cassette player, and I'm recording, you know, I'm recording tapes, you know, I'm recording all of these writing sessions. They were fantastic. So who, who did they you write with fantastic. first? Did you write first with Gene, with Paul? Do you remember? Do you remember no, what the first song was? No, there? actually, hold on a second. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Ooh. Did write with Gene first. Okay. I did write. They write with Gene first. And, do, you, do you remember uh, what the first song was? Was it I Love It Killer. Loud? K- Killer, Killer. Was first, okay. Killer was the first song. And I remember this was a song that I brought in. And, uh, okay, I, I could be wrong, okay, because you're mm-hmm. talking a lot of years ago. Yep, you, know, but, yeah. you know, I'm trying, I'm trying my best to remember, remember. 
Um, but there was a point where either it was killer or we had gotten first together because we're on the thing. Things are happening really quickly, mm-hmm. and it could have been. It could have been "I Love It Loud." Could have been the first song. It could have been. Um, but you know, you and I talked briefly about this at the at the Chris the Merry Metal Christmas yep. show. Yep. Uh, but you know, for people that w- wasn't there, weren't there, you know, the the recap was that um, Gene and I hit it off. Very, you know, we hit it. I I think we hit it off really quickly. Uh, you know, he was bigger than life to me, mm-hmm. and uh, he always wanted to get the blints. He always <laughs> wanted to go to the to, to Cantor's Deli. He wanted, always <laughs> wanted to get the nice bagel with a little cream cheese on it. Mm-hmm. And I'd say, okay, I'll go with you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay, I had to throw that in there. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, we just met. In my opinion, we were harmonious. It was a terrific, terrific harmony of uh, a, a fantastic match of backgrounds, bands we love, uh, uh, songs we had, you know, love, you know, you know that, that we. we you love this. You like this. You like, you like, you like this, this band. So it was a good harmony between us as far as our musical tastes were concerned. Yeah. And I think, I, I, if, if I'm not wrong, I Love It Loud could have been the first song we wrote. Then Killer came into the picture. Then um, Michael had said, I think you want to write with Paul next. Mm-hmm. And that went extremely well. And the first songs that we had written were, you know, you got to have to understand the setting here. You know, I'm bringing in a guitar. Paul's got a guitar. I got my little cassette put deck. And we go, okay, let's let's see if any songs are born here. And, uh, oh, man, here's how I remember it. I, I Paul was playing a, a chord progression. And uh, I started singing over it, and uh, it was some some song named Julie had had come out of it. It was very like like a Rolling Stones kind of thing, and um, I think size. I think the song's pretty cool. I like the song. I I, I always like the song. And then I think it was the same same day. I had played the chord progression for I Still Love You. Mm-hmm. And because I, I have all this stuff on tape and I started singing, uh, just kind of improvising a vocal over it. And the, a lot of words were forming at that time. I'm thinking, boy, we really, you know, we, we are clicking here. Now I think Paul added some things and I added more things and hey, you know, this we got we really got something here between what we're creating with between me and and both of Gene and Paul. Mm-hmm. And then it then it started to you know advance from there. But still I wasn't in the band. I wasn't right for them. Paul hated, you know, the fact that I didn't look the part and you know Ace you have to understand, and, and this is something I understood at the time, but bands that lose a member uh, are always looking for the same re- same person to replace the member they lost, mm-hmm. you know, and I was too short. I, I, I'm 5'7", mm-hmm. too short. Mm-hmm. So I would also always say to Gene, what are you trying out? Because they, they were going through auditions, guitar player auditions. And I would, why, why are you trying all these guitar players? You know, I'm, I'm perfect for this band. Well, you're too short. I said, I'm too short. I said, that doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm saying a lot of great guitar players are short. So I, I'm, I was, I'm not short. You're too tall. You know, <laughs> I'm five, seven. That's, that's normal, but you're like seven feet tall, yeah, you know? Mm-hmm. And so they, <laughs> they were looking for people that were taller and to their, 
you know, to their, uh, they had the choice of all the best looking guitar players, you know, whoever I saw coming to audition at the recording studio where we were trying to record these demos. Mm -hmm. I, I was there recording demos, but, uh, they were still auditioning guitar players. So I'm kind of, you know, I'm definitely left out mm -hmm. and I'm feeling, uh, okay, well, all right, this is okay. You know, I'll just be a songwriter on these, these records, this record. And, you know, uh, thank the fates that, you know, I got this far, you know, that's okay. Right. But still there was that, that voice that said, you know, you belong here. This is, this is, it all works. You know, why, you know, peanut butter and jelly, <laughs> you know, bread and butter, oil and vinegar, you know, mm -hmm. things that are like natural, natural combinations. And, uh, I said, look, I can't convince anybody. They got to do what they want to do. But still I was, there was always that, why are you trying to hold everybody else out when I'm right here? I'm perfect. And, you know, the harmony is here between what we do. Paul kept saying, no, 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 no. Uh, and Gene, I always had a greater affinity for Gene, and we always had a greater connection than I did personally with Paul, which is probably the same way, to, you know, probably nothing's changed, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, unfortunately, nothing's changed, but... Uh, I get to understand people for who, who they are and what they are and what, you know, what they find attractive and what they don't. And it's fine. You know, with me, I let go and it doesn't matter anymore. I just move on to what's right for me. Um, but you have to understand this is a little moment in time and fate is playing out its hand. And, you can't argue with fate. You can't change it because it's going to have its way one way or another. doesn't matter what the fuck you want. You could try to change it and you can alter it, but it's still going to, it's still going to spin that, you know, spin that dial and it's going to come up to the number it wants to, wants it to be for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, like, can we just and, go back? Uh, I'm sorry, Vin, can we go back for a minute? You said, if I heard you right before, when we, when you were talking about the songs, um, Killer was was that it sounded like you were saying that was your song and then you brought it into Gene and then you guys kind of worked on it together but was that your song first did you say did you say the stones or I, I couldn't quite understand the word you said no I said the song Killer right it sounds like oh you, the song Killer yeah the song Killer the song Killer was just about all of my song okay just about all of it and I remember Damn, I don't remember how I recorded a demo of it, but I did record a demo of it, and I said, "What do you think of this?" And I have it here. I have it. I, I still have it. It's it's the old, earliest known recording of it. It's me singing, real shitty demo, you know, shitty quality. And uh, I remember Gene saying, "I like that. I really like that." I can't remember if Gene added anything to it. Because I remember the whole song, you know, the demo of the song was done. Um, so we'll just leave it at that. Okay. Whatever I could remember, I'm giving you right here. Sure, know. sure, fair enough. Um, now, I know that you told... Um, anyway. When, yeah, yeah. When we were talking at the Christmas party, I thought you told me a great story about I Love It Loud and where where you actually wrote that with Gene. Um, do, you, do you remember where you wrote Gene that? Gene had this great... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I said, well, I love that, mm -hmm. you know, I love that. And then he always wanted to write like my generation, um, um, by the who, yep. down, 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 Talking about my generation, mm -hmm. just because I get around talking about my generation. So, you know, who doesn't love that? Of course, <laughs> you know. Uh, the the people that were there, like me and Gene, and we love it. You know, so he was playing that, 
and he had these two incredible parts. So um, we started. Believe believe it or not, we one day he said, "Meet me at Diana Ross's house." Mm-hmm. Gave me the address, and well, let's ride over there. And so she had this. I think I was telling you at the at the Christmas party, yeah. she had this great home with this cavern. It was a cavern. Uh, um. It was just a cavern, you know. Her her living room was just this gigantic airplane hangar. (laughs) And Eugene brings over his little amp, his guitar, and down, 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 down. Guilty till I'm proven innocent. (laughs) And then all these these lyrics came out. Mm -hmm. And I'm singing them, you know. I'm singing them. You know, rock on, want to be the president. Better believe it, you know. (laughs) And he's playing these chords, and I'm going, yeah, 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 I like that. Uh, and then that's how these songs are born. And I, I've, I've got my tapes. I've got my cassette player on recording every single moment. I've got 150 hours of, of songwriting sessions and live performances yep. Yep. And on, on, on the original cassettes that are almost 40 years old that are in pristine condition. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. From Creatures of the Night, uh, Revenge, and Lick It Up. Mm-hmm. I got every song we ever tried to write and, and a lot of demos of the early songs. I mean, this is like a wealth. I mean, talk about hi- history. My God, these, these are special. Absolutely. You know, um, I, I've seen a listing of songs that were considered for the Creatures of the Night album. And one of the songs mm-hmm. listed is a song called Betrayed. I know a lot of Kiss fans. Oh, originally, Betrayed. Yeah, I know a lot of Kiss fans originally thought that was a Gene song because they released a song called Betrayed in 1989. But I suspect this was your song because I've seen that there was a demo you had from Warrior called Betrayed. Am, am I right saying that Betrayed was your song? Yeah, yeah. I brought. I said, hey, this is a great song. Let's do this. <laughs> and I don't know. I think they recorded this on some other record and... I don't. I, I never even heard it, but I when I saw the title, I said, "Well, that'd be an awful coincidence if it wasn't my <laughs> song that I introduced." Uh, but eh, you know, what the hell doesn't matter at this point. Yeah, it, I'll um, tell you from what I heard, it sounds nothing like yours, but um, perhaps at least the title was thought back. Okay, if know. it didn't sound like mine, then it wasn't mine. Yeah, but did you guys um, re- did you record your version for Creatures of the Night with Kiss? Oh, good question. Um, boy, we recorded a lot of stuff. Mm. I don't remember. I don't remember. I'm going to leave it there because I don't remember. Fair enough. Fair uh, enough. I just don't remember. Okay. But what I do remember was Michael saying to me, Vinny, kids are going to re- kids are going to record back on the streets. They want you mm-hmm. to come down and set up the track and you play the track and we're going to record the song for the album. I'm going, oh, <laughs> you know, whoa, mm-hmm. okay, whoa, whoa, yep. oh, man, it's too big for me. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get my mind around that. And uh, I had a couple of little, <laughs> a couple of little muffins in the oven, you know, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> and uh, oh, you know, no money, a couple of kids coming, and. I'm thinking, woo, wow, this is big, you know, okay, 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 great, 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 great. And every day it was, so, is there any money for food today? (laughs) Not really. Okay, well, we'll figure it out, you know. So I'm driving my my really, really, really old car down there, and I'm just making it down to the studio. And Michael says, well, here, you just set the song up uh, with the drum machine or whatever, I can't remember how, how it exactly happened, but nobody was there but me in the studio. Mm-hmm. And I said, so am I going to get scale, you know, a paid, you know, scale out of this, musician so, scale? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, don't worry about it. Okay, great. <laughs> so, I don't know, I spent like three or four days and racked up about $5,000 worth of, worth of, you know, payments, because I wasn't in the band. Well, Michael said, Vinny, can you make it down, you know, tomorrow? I, I think I'd left, and I said, can you, can you file the 
the papers so I can get paid, you know, some money. So I remember Michael calling me. He says, I'll talk to the, to the guys and try to get you some money. So he calls me back and he says, Vinny, they don't want to pay you. They think, they feel that you should be happy that you're getting a song on a Kiss album. And I can't do anything about it, but that's how they are. And I said, well, you know, look, you're talking to a couple of millionaires, and I got nothing, okay? Mm-hmm. I don't even have money for gas to get down there. And my situation is I'm just a regular person. And, you know, I mean, right is right, and I need to get paid. Yeah. And I, I tried to do it, but I can't make it happen. I says, oh, really? I says, well, guess what? I ain't coming back. So, see ya. Good luck. And I left it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I don't know, three days passed. And he called me back and he says, okay, they agreed to pay you through the union, so you're going to get your check. I said, okay, and I'll be back. Mm-hmm. And that's that was that was step number two, you know. And then was the audition period of all these other guitar players coming in and trying to play solos while I'm still there. Mm. I remember saying, this guy doesn't fit. You know, this guy doesn't fit this band. This this guitar player doesn't fit. I remember telling 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 them, like, why are you, you know, why are you going through these auditions? Man, I'm perfect. So one thing led to another, and all of a sudden I'm starting. We're we're re- actually rehearsing at SAR together. And so Gene says, well, don't do this bit. Don't do this bit. That's how he, he, he was with me. Mm-hmm. I like that. Don't do this. Do this. I don't like this. Uh, you know, I like this, this bit, but I don't like that bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. not good. Okay, okay. What, what is it you want me to do? It stands there. Don't, don't, don't bend over. Don't get on your knees. Don't do that <laughs> shit. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. Okay, fine. So <laughs> I said, okay, that's fine. That's fine. So, so. This is how this is how all the before and how it all came to to actually be, you know. Right. And when you say so, take me to that place. Well, there was a hundred little facets uh, that that were a part of how it began. Then there was this one place where it all came. It, it was like one. It was like a baseball being thrown 90 miles an hour in slow motion. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, you slowed it down. You're just watching this baseball. You don't know where it's going to hit. And it was really, really, really in slow-mo for a long time. And it was, okay, okay. Uh, we went through the whole process of you're in the band. Maybe you're not. Maybe you are. And it actually had come down to after... The Creatures album had taken a turn where I'm now still in L.A. and all the recording finished. Mm -hmm. And it was, okay, Vinny, thanks a lot. You did a great job. See ya. And I went, wow, Jesus, I guess that's it. And uh, maybe a week, maybe two weeks passed. And I get another call back from them. And they said, Vinny, we're in New York. Can you get on a plane? we want you to come back and play a a lead solo for Keep Me Coming. Mm -hmm. And I said, sure, sure, of course I'll be back. And uh, I got on a plane, went back, and met them at a studio, and we ripped a a solo for that song. And this was the turning point. Uh, This was when everything changed. You know, then I have to, I have to um, stop you for one moment. Do you know, is your solo the one on the album? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, awesome. That's the one, yeah. Awesome. Okay. I haven't heard that in ages and ages and ages and ages. So I can't even remember remember any of, any of the creature's stuff except for, you know, the... I remember... I know, I know the three, the three common ones, yeah. but all the other songs I never, never listened to. And uh, when I, when you know, I do some of these signing shows, you know, we uh, always are playing, you know, parts of Creatures and parts mm-hmm. of Lick It Up, and 
Vinnie Vincent Invasion as part of the, uh, you know, music background of everybody coming in. Sure. And one day, I remember playing uh, Not for the Innocent. I says, yeah, that's a great song. What is that? (laughs) I just Not for the Innocent, because I said, shit, it was great. I don't remember it being... Mm -hmm. I like that. It's got, it's got a thing. I, I don't know. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 So you know, a lot of these things, I you know, totally forgot. Of course. Uh, so, and so it, look, keep me coming is one of them. Can't yeah. remember that for anything. Yeah, I would sing it for um, you, but, so but then. All of a sudden, what was that? I said I would sing it for you, but trust me, you don't want to hear me sing. Um, do you recall if what other <laughs> do you recall what other songs that you played on the Creatures album? Like, just, I'll be honest, I didn't know for sure that you were playing on "Keep Me Coming." It sounded like you, but I wasn't positive. Do you know what other songs you Keep played? Keep Me on? Coming played on "Love It Loud," "Killers," "Saint and Sinner." Uh, what else? There's a, These are the ones I could remember. Yeah. Rock and Roll Hell, uh, "War Machine." War Machine played on War Machine. On War Machine. Okay. Who? Danger. What was it? Danger. Oh, uh, was that me? Oh God, I don't remember. Okay. That one I don't remember. Okay. Uh Oh God. Hey, you gotta forgive me. Yeah, you know, it's a long time. Some, ago. some I remember. Some stuff I remember. Some stuff I don't. But. Um, this was when they were getting, you know, auditioning guitar players by having them actually play leads for the album. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. some stuff I agreed with. Some I said, uh, whatever you're gonna do, you're, you know, it's your band. You know, <laughs> it certainly isn't mine. Yep. But when people say Vinnie Vincent wanted to take over Kiss, they're absolutely right. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So, so it sounds. I like... wanted to make it, and they're they're totally a hundred percent right. Mm-hmm. You know, one thing that I'm not sure if you know about me is. Uh, I make my own rules. I play by my own rules, and that's what works, you know. And yes. if you want honest, I give you honest. You want, you want like sort of softball. I give you softball. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I mean, so t- which one do you want? Well, hard l- boiled, hard, yeah. hard boiled ball, or you want softball? Well, let's go back to your to your comment then. So you said you wanted to take over Kiss, right? Do you want to elaborate on that? Totally. Totally. <laughs> Go, I go figured if you got somebody with my talent and my ability, I ain't going to be, you know, an employee, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And if this work works, uh, uh, the way, the way, the, the way you, it's working, then you let me in and you let me be part of this, really be part of this. And yeah, yeah, totally. Okay. Do you ever have any regrets the way totally. the, the way things went down during the creature sessions that you could have played maybe more on the album or do you feel satisfied with it? Satisfied me, I'm never satisfied. Okay. You know, I'm never satisfied. So with me, it's it's I I'm a I'm a uh, perfectionist and it never it never ends. You know, I'll drive myself completely crazy until I. You know, if I can really reach and achieve perfection, then then that's what I'm going to get one way or another. So, you know, re-recording, redoing, re-this, re-that, to me, like, you know, a lot of players or a lot of musicians or a lot of producers, I'll just leave it, it's done. And I go, fuck it, it ain't done until it's done the way I want it done, you know? So, yeah, it came out, but hey, why can't it come out again the way I want it done? Sure. Um, what I do remember about Creatures is that uh, I wasn't satisfied with the way the mix of the album had come out. Um, the mix of the album, I thought, was terrible. It, it was all drums. There was no power behind it. And one day, I'm talking about the final release of Mixes. But one day we're all in a recording studio and I, it was the record plant and I this this I remember very clearly. They've given the record to a guy named Bob Clear Mountain to to mix. Mm-hmm. And uh the record had been finished and everybody had been called into to the record plant to hear the mixes that Bob made. And uh I had no idea what to expect. And all I remember I never heard them other than that moment in at the record plant. 
And all I remember was saying to myself, my God, oh my God, this is wicked, mm-hmm. you know? And this is, this is, this is just sheer power. This is what I remember saying to myself mm-hmm. at that time. Mm-hmm. And it knocked me on my butt, just knocked me right on my ass. Mm-hmm. And I thought, my God, this is really fantastic. But they didn't like it. Interesting. The powers didn't like it. And I thought, you don't like this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> really? I <laughs> mean, if you don't like this, then I, I don't know what to say, you know? We're living on two different planets, but okay, it doesn't matter. What what's my opinion matter? It doesn't matter. But you know, as a as somebody who had a vested, very invested interest in that record, and wanting to hear the, the the incredible potential of what that record really had, whatever mixes I heard were were fantastic, absolutely mm-hmm. fantastic, and then. I was not there during the final mixes of the record. When I heard it, I was severely disappointed. And uh, I thought, geez, all I hear are drums. There's no power. You know, what happened to those, like, like Mike Tyson punches, you know? Mm-hmm. I was like, boom, one, one hit, and you're on your ass. You're knocked out. That was what those mixes that Bob Clear Mountain did for those records, mm-hmm. for that record. But it was what it was. I mean, I think they were looking for Led Zeppelin, huge drum sounds, and everything else came secondary. And everything else was, in my in my ears, to, to my ears, everything else was small sounding. It sounded big because there were big drums. Right. But as a as a overall one two punch and you're out cold, it didn't have that to me. So so if you were going to uh, mix the album, what would you do differently? Well, the power was there, you mm-hmm. know, the recorded power, the recorded instruments were there. Um, when Gene played bass, he ripped my fucking face right off. Mm-hmm. So when I heard, when I ever heard, when I hear him play bass, when he just picks up his bass, uh, I'm going, man, I, I want to play. Just let me plug in and get Eric and let's play. You know, and that's, that's how playing with him was. I love playing with Gene, you know. Mm-hmm. He was my he's my favorite bass player, still to this day. Okay. Um, it's just sheer sheer power, just raw power, and that power was there. All the all the all the all the actual guitar sounds and the bass and everything was there. It just was secondary. If I were to mix that record, I would make them primary, bring the drums down, and make it all equal. In, into one consolidated, you know, uh, uh, anvil, metal, you know, some, something that is made of metal, something huge, round, like a, like a wrecking ball. Mm-hmm. And it's, it was all there, but it just got secondary treatment, and the drums got primary treatment, and I, I would do it much differently if it was me. Anyway, you know... Mm-hmm. Water, a lot of water under that bridge, and the record is what the record is. It's a great record. You know, the songs are great. And it has a sound all its own, but it's not the sound I would have chosen for that record. You know, could have gotten all of that, but much more powerful. No, makes sense. Makes sense. And what was your relationship like? Uh, did you meet Eric Cards or in the recordings? And what was your relationship like with him? Eric, Eric was my, 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 my little buddy. I loved him. Everybody loved Eric, you know, mm-hmm. what's not the love? He was, he was, um, you know, he was a sunshine, you know, mm-hmm. um, he was a really friendly, uh, outgoing, warm, very caring person, always made you feel like you were important, always made you feel like you were a friend, and uh, he was a fantastic person. Yep. Totally fantastic. And he was a, a great drummer. And I hate drummers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I fucking hate drummers, man, more than anything. Mm-hmm. Um, because they don't know how to play a drum beat. And uh, Eric knew how to play a beat. He knew how to play a song. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
he played guitar. He played bass. Yep. So he understood the the writing aspect of a song. So when he played drums, he played he played drums like he was uh, playing a song, you know. And and he he knew the importance of how a, st- a song was constructed. Yep. And but generally, uh, and I say this generally, drummers do not understand that concept. The only the greatest drummer, the only drummer. I would, yeah, I'm sure there's others I would work with, <laughs> but the person, the one person, the one only person that's on my list is Jason Bonham. Understandable. You know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Other than Jason Bonham, there's nobody on my list as far as a rock drummer is concerned. Okay. okay. I want to go back to something you brought um, Oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was go ahead, say, you lead the way. Where yeah. are you going? No, I said I wanted to go back to something you said before, right? So the album came out. To my knowledge, you're not officially in the band yet. In fact, they go overseas and they do TV shows for like a month, a month and a half until early December with Ace Frehley in the band. During that time that they were doing those TV shows, did you know you were going to be a member of KISS? Did they ever put you on like... Yes. Yeah, so you knew you were going to be in the band. Did they put you on notice? Like, oh, yeah. Did yep. you know... Uh, like, they did... Um... Go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead, what? No, I was going to say, if, if if Ace didn't show up to those, were you on call, like that you'd have to show up to do those TV performances with them? I was giving, I was given a, an, a, a contract mm-hmm. on September, hmm, in September 1982, I was given a contract to join the band. Okay. And September 82. So Lick It Up came out, came out September 83. But so while I had that had contract, that contract um, um, pretty sure that, that they were, uh, Kiss were recording I Love It Loud with Ace, yep. uh, doing a video with Ace. Yep. This is what I remember. Yep, no, no, your memory's right. It was uh, that time period where they did the I Love It Loud video and Ace was in it. And then they went overseas and they did a bunch of TV shows with Ace. But it sounds like during that time. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. While they were doing the recording with the, the video with Ace, Ace was, as far as I remember, officially out. Mm-hmm. Um, he had some contractual obligations he had to fulfill. I was officially in, he was officially out, but for the sake of fulfillment of obligations, he was there. Right. Right. But you knew and at that point you were going to be in the band. Film, I was actually at the filming of uh, the, the video filming for I Love It Loud. I was actually there watching it all being filmed. And uh, so Ace ended up on the album cover for the same contractual obligations, etc. Mm-hmm. And uh, then, the, then the tour was about to begin. And now came time for Vinny. The, the tour, the rehearsal for the tour was beginning uh, middle of October. So September, I, I received a contract. September, October. Middle of October, we had... Uh, scheduled rehearsals in Dallas with the tank stage. And I was a kind of generally uh, somewhat of an airplane hanger. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, in order to get the show together and uh, this, the moment, ca- the moment came when you, Vinny, you got to either sign this contract or you can't come to rehearsals. You know, we're moving on without you. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, my, 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 my parents were, you know, we were close all our lives, you know, and I was always looking for, you know, my, my huge break in, in business and, and that, that's what it was all about, you know, mm-hmm. and they were really happy, really happy for me. For me. Remember so saying that, saying that, 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 that in New York City, City, about a month had gone by with this contract. And I, I was reading it over, and I said, there is no fucking way in the world you can't, I'm not, 
finding my soul over to this. Mm -hmm. This is not going to happen. There's nothing in here for me. It's all for them, nothing for me. I get nothing here, nothing. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a real time of decision. I had to, you know, it was it was all all the things I had hoped, all the hopes and dreams just crashed right down. And so a month had passed. I had my attorney look everything. And he says, look, man, this is a terrible, terrible contract. And I don't advise you signing it. You know, I'll see what I can do. I'll keep talking to them, see if we can do anything. And, and uh, it just wasn't, it wasn't going well. Okay, It's just that simple. So I remember saying, look, I want to, I want to sign this, but I can't sign this, you know, give me something that I can feel good about signing, but I cannot sign this. And, uh, you know, he was trying to work it out with them. And then and I think the ultimatum came. It was just a real simple ultimatum. If you don't sign it, you're not in the band. You can't come to rehearsal. And I said, look, I'm going home then. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, I'm heartbroken. I'm going home. And that's it. So I went home. Mm -hmm. You know, that was it. Went home. And, uh, okay, you know, whatever. You know, I learned to let go. When mm -hmm. things don't are not supposed to be, then they're then you got to know that you have to, you have to know it. You have to be ready to say goodbye. And, and, and that, that's the end of it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Hey, it was hard. It broke my heart, but there was no way I was going to sign that contract. Right. And, um, went home. My mother said, look, I'm going to try to work this out. And he knew what was right for me. Like any lawyer knows what's good for the client, you know, and he wanted to see this happen. And I, so did I. So, he arranged it so it was okay, Vinny. We're going to try to work out the terms here. In the meantime, you're back in the band. Go to rehearsal, and good luck, and start start touring. And that's exactly what happened. So I met them in in Dallas at the show, and we were back on, you know. And really, that's that was sort of the beginning stage of it. Sorry, right, so, so go ahead. You got, I'm sure you got. Yeah, so no, no, no. I'll, so, I'll take a break. Yeah, no, that's interesting. So you guys rehearsed in Dallas, it sounds like, for the Creatures tour. Prior to them going overseas, they come back overseas. It sounds like you knew during that time that you were going to be in the band. And I know you come back, and then early December, mid-December, you do a photo shoot with a photographer, I think his name is Sam Emerson. And the reason this photo shoot to me is always interesting and Vinny, you know this, usually when KISS had a new member, the new member was a little bit more in the background. But that photo shoot, you're front and center, almost like, I'll say, the star of the photos in many of them. Do you remember that photo shoot? And it kind of seems like you took charge of that photo really shoot. really well, yeah. really clearly. Okay. And in fact, um, you know, all of those moments that of of all of these periods from creatures and lick it up mm -hmm. they were really really important to me they they were tr tr you know they were treasures to me mm -hmm. and uh um i had kept all the pol the original polaroids from that that photo session for the tour book and um i still have them they're just in pristine condition mm -hmm. And I've got 15 Polaroids, 15 or 20 Polaroids from that session. Mm -hmm. I say, hey, you know, can I, can I hang it? Can I keep these? Oh, sure, they're yours. And they're, they're absolutely fantastic, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and this, I mean, this, this is a treasured part of history, mm -hmm. treasured part, because mm -hmm. it was test shots, test shots for, for the tour book, Creatures right. Tour Book. Yeah. But yes, I remember being front and center, uh, and it was, uh, it was a glorious time, you know, it should have been anyway, but, uh, contracts and, uh, bad, bad contracts, one-sided contracts ripped us apart and mm -hmm. took away something that should have been, should have been a piece of cake, man. This is, this is just the best, you know, one of the best match combinations that, Potential. It was a potentially great combination. The pot all the potential was there. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned more from Gene than than I could put a put a dollar sign on. Mm -hmm. You know, he taught me a lot. He taught me how to perform. He taught me taught me more than I could have ever ever learned anywhere. You know, right. 
And uh, Paul never had anything to do with me. You know, this guy just, <laughs> he didn't want me there. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, I was always trying to please him, but there was there was no way I could please him. Just, he didn't want me there. He wanted, he wanted, you know, somebody like Ace. Right. I think they got who they want, the guy they got now. I think they, they got what they want, you know. Mm-hmm. It's it's Ace, you know, whatever is close to close enough to Ace, you know, playing that sounds familiar to their ears or whatever. But Gene, I don't know why him and I had something, some connection that was always very nice, mm-hmm. always really good. I always I always liked Gene. He was my favorite bass player, probably probably still is. Uh but I love I love working with him. Every time we got together, we wrote great songs. You know, yeah. always, always something always, always happened. Always. You know? Absolutely, that, that yeah, good that. music magic, magic always happened. Absolutely. But we get together. I don't. We'd always take a, a limo together after the show, and he'd always say, "You know that bit you did over here? <laughs> don't do it. I hate that bit." <laughs> I said, "Well, you know, I'm trying to walk around in these boots, and I keep falling down." He said, that's okay, stay down. If you're down, you stay down. You don't get up. <laughs> mm-hmm. You make it part of the a part of the show. I said, okay, okay, okay. But then, you know, it was he was he taught me so much. Good. He yeah. really taught me a, like like things that were I could never find on my own, you right. know? Right. And uh he's just great, man. The guy was the guy was was my mentor, you know, you want to put it that way. I, right. I learned more through him than, than I did from anybody. Right, right. Uh, and, and unfortunately, the creature's door just bombed, you know? <laughs> yep. Um, what, what was bombed. that like? Was, what, what, was the, what would the band feel like? You know, what was it like for you playing to like half-filled arenas? For me, I, what do I know? Right. You know, I'm just a kid. You know, I'm just a new kid here. What do I know? It's not my call, you mm-hmm. know. I'm just trying to get through the show and and do the best that I could do, you know. Um, it was their business, their show, their, you know, their everything. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to make everybody happy, right. you know. Yep. Uh, it was a brand new experience for them. And, of course, it's completely brand new for me because, mm-hmm. you know, only a few months before I'm going, well, I don't understand how I'm going to be go from Vinny the, you know, the nobody to Vinny Vincent, the, the, you know, the comic book hero, you know, (laughs) the superhero. And how is that going to be? I don't quite understand that. And then, then it happened, you know, you just, you put on the clothes and you're there and boom, you're on that stage. And then it just, it just happens. And, you know, the, 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 the playing out of it in your mind goes away and you're actually here doing it. And, you know, once you get used to it, you're just now used to it. This mm-hmm. is, this is it. We're doing this. And the mm-hmm. more you do it, the better you get at it. And then it's like anything, but, Absolutely. uh, we got to be a really good, we got to be pretty good. Absolutely. And by the end of the creature store, we got to be real good. I think Absolutely. I recorded every show and, uh, by the time we hit Rio, man, we were good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jesus, I don't know. We were we were really good. At least in my opinion, we were really good. We did three shows in Brazil: Belo Horizonte, São Paulo. It's not São Paulo. It's Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo. Yep. Uh, I always make that that pronunciation wrong. Uh, and and Rio, mm-hmm. um, and. Uh, Damn, we were really good. Yeah. No, so no, by I, that show, yep. I'm sorry. No, I was gonna say I agree. I've seen the video as most Kiss fans have, and it's it's a great, great show in front of 130 some odd thousand people. Oh, forget it. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you looked out there, you didn't even see people. It was just this blur. <laughs> you know, you saw something, but you didn't know what you were looking at. Yep. Uh, it, it was you just heard this roar, and and just. You know, we were there all day, and I was the, you know, the typical tourist, you know, taking a thousand pictures, everything, everywhere, you know, with everybody. So we were there all day. We were rehearsing at the stadium, and 
you know, taking pictures of everything. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. And but there was nothing to prepare you for the show. Right. And uh, there was just this moment of uh, electricity, you know, that the, the human body actually can feel electrified. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least I sure did. You know? Absolutely. But there was a calmness that came that I felt coming over me. Uh, okay, you're on. Oh, you know, mm-hmm. Just this, this mm-hmm. complete, complete calmness, calmness. Over, over me. And all of a sudden, instead of like things falling apart in your mind, they all just kind of, it was like some kind of slow motion and this, this great feeling of calm and, and organization of, uh, man, I can control this whole thing up here. You know, this feels so natural and it was able, we were able to connect really easily on stage. Mm-hmm. I don't know how. It was just one of those strange moments where uh, it, it just became the more the more intense everything became, the more calm and organized I felt. Absolutely. So um, I remember towards the last song, I remember Gene said said to me, whispered in my ear, "Get ready to you know, we, got, we got the military coming." <laughs> they got their military vehicles here. Uh, they got so don't, don't, something like uh, they got guns and machine guns. And they said, you know, it's going to get crazy towards the end, so mm-hmm. get ready to run. <laughs> they're, you know, they're, they'll, they'll, we're going to rush into their vehicles and we're going to get out of here. Wow. And that's all I remember him whispering to me at the last song. I said, okay, got it. And uh, I think that was it. Once it was over, we got ushered really quickly, ushered into these uh, military vehicles, and they got us out of there real quick. It, it must have been crazy. Back to the hotel yeah. and uh, something like that. Yeah, I was going to say, it must have been crazy going from playing to two, 3,000 people in America so over a hundred thousand people in South America over the course of just a few months. Well, I, what I do remember is before, oh, maybe a couple of months before Rio actually happened, uh, I was living at my in-laws' house at the time. Got the the local newspaper of you know the Bridgeport Post. I remember, mm-hmm. and in there was an article because there was talk of going to South America. Yep. And there was an article in there. I'm sorry, I can remember sitting at the dinner table. I'm reading this article. And it says, uh, you know, uh, left-wing fanatics plan to assassinate Kiss if they come to Argentina, because we were supposed to go to Argentina. Mm-hmm. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa <laughs> what? And so I get on the phone, I called you, and I said, wait, wait, are you real? did you know this? I'm reading him the story. He says, yeah. Yeah, I think I saw that. I said, well, he says, I don't think you want to do this, do you? He says, uh, don't worry about it. We're, we're working, working this out. And I just said, okay, let me know. Mm-hmm. Just let me know what's going on. And uh, so finally it got settled, and we were going to Brazil. And uh, we did. It was, uh, it was a, an absolutely fantastic experience. Uh, one I'll never forget, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it was a great year that we were there, you know, it was 1980, how was that? 83. June of 83. Yep. Man, what a great year for mm-hmm. everything, you know, and even Brazil with all the problems they're having now, mm-hmm. it was still a great time in the world or at least many parts of the world. And I remember Blame It on Rio was a movie that came out right around that time. And it was exactly like that. Mm-hmm. Um, just just this exotic paradise and uh, had a fantastic time in life, you know, which was 83. Absolutely. It's funny you mentioned, so, you mentioned some of the challenges with Argentina before. Um, when I think of the U.S. tour that you guys did that year, it was also met with a bunch of religious protests and you know, people chanting outside that, you know, kiss of the devil and all of that type of stuff. 
did, how, how do you feel having just joined the band and kind of that's the storyline around the band at that time? Did you just tune it out? Did it bother you? What, what were your thoughts on those religious protests? I, I was oblivious to it. I just thought, you know, it's like, how ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's all that I kept. That's my, my view of it was how ridiculous. Yep. Yep. And Excuse me. I'm sorry. What was that? No, no, no. I was listening to you. I was sneezing, so you got to <laughs> somewhere in all of this. I'm going to you know, make a noise, so go ahead. Yeah, so, you know, I wanted to ask you also, um, KISS fans have talked about for years that the very first tour, very first show of the Creatures of the Night tour was in Bismarck, North Dakota, and that the costumes did not arrive in time because of a snowstorm, and that you and the rest of the band members had to wear some of the older costumes they had from a prior tour. Do you remember anything at all about that? Did you ever have to wear a costume that wasn't yours? Uh, you know, now that you actually mentioned the snowstorm thing, mm -hmm. uh, I do remember that. Mm -hmm. As far as the costumes, to me, they one was the same as the other mm -hmm. at that time. You know, I didn't know one costume from another. <laughs> okay. Uh, I do remember at one point that I, I had to wear Ace's boots. Yep. Mine weren't ready or something like that. Uh, but I'll tell you, the, the costumes were extremely light and airy, mm -hmm. and they were very easy to wear, you know? And uh, you felt like you had nothing on, okay. you know? And you have to... I'll, I'll tell you what we were doing. Flower shows and sweating like pigs. pigs. And uh, between that and the Lick It Up tour, um, just the sweat, the sweat. And, you know, I think any band that's, that's playing a two-hour show, you're going to be working off a lot of calories and your metabolism is going to be extremely high, Absolutely. you know? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, your stamina gets to be amazing, you know, when you're doing these kinds of shows. And, and you know, my my respect really went to somebody like, like Paul, mm -hmm. you know, I think Paul Stanley was, in my opinion, one of the greatest frontman singers that ever were, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, his, his ability to do what he did was, I don't know, in my opinion, he, he was, he was phenomenal at, mm -hmm. at what he did. Yeah, I, and, uh, it was just, it was just like, a, just had this gift, you know, and he was the, he was, in my opinion, it, it would take a lot to undo, to outdo his ability of, you know, hitting those notes night after night mm -hmm. and, you know, holding up and, and, you know, putting on that, that act mm -hmm. night after night. That's a, that's a strain, you know, to sing like that, to play, sing, move, dance. I mean, he, he had it, you know, he had it all. He was, uh, in, in my opinion, one of the best there ever was. Yeah, you know, I think that's one of the things with the makeup, I feel Paul is kind of overlooked as a front man and as a singer that a lot of people can't get past the makeup. But I agree with you, Vinny, 100%. To me, he's one of the greatest front men there ever was in rock and roll. Ever was, and yeah. I'll tell you what. I think the makeup was a real hindrance at at, at the the music business in general taking Kiss seriously, mm -hmm. from the from the Creatures of the Night to the Lick It Up album, it was a real tough time. Even when we removed the makeup, in my it's, these are all just my opinions, okay? Mm -hmm. Yep, of course. They're probably worth nothing, and, and and I'm not trying to make them worth something, but I I never felt like the business, the music business itself took Kiss seriously mm -hmm. as artists, just as artists, yeah. which was unfair. You know, I think we had, uh, we had potential that was, the will never come around again. Mm -hmm. You know, the potential that was there that we could have tapped. I mean, it was like, like going into a gold mine and saying, Oh, I think we just hit a vein. Mm -hmm. Oh, Oh man, we just hit the mother load here and not digging it out and like sort of close walking away from it. And it's too bad. We never really got to where the potential of that band really should have gone. I mean, after Lick was stopping us, yeah. no stopping that band. Yeah. 
But, you know, it's another interview away. Next inter- <laughs> interview you should do one of these days is the business interviews, and that, that'll that tell you why these things never really, really materialized. Absolutely. But um, um, as far as the business taking KISS serious as a real serious band, and it, and it became serious when I joined the band. Mm-hmm. And like it or not, it was... It was a powerhouse. It was just the beginning of what could have been. Yeah. By Lick It Up, uh, some terrible things were happening in the recording studio, and there was still no contract, and I was still making no money, and you know, the unhappiness was was breeding like like a disease, and blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. But uh, creatures produced um we i'll tell you what we were writing songs in rio for the creatures uh, for the lick it up album okay. in, in our hotel room mm-hmm. we were actually in rio for two weeks and every day almost every day we were writing songs in the hotel rooms with each other because when we got back to new york we had to go directly into a recording studio to begin recording yep yeah. Do you remember what songs you were so, writing in Brazil? Uh, good question. Good question. Uh, All Hell's Breaking Loose and Lick It Up didn't even materialize until we got back to New York. Okay. Uh, you got Paul Excita, and I spent a lot of time. Excita, Young and Wasted, Give Me More. I'll roll off the songs for you um, on the eighth day. Uh, um Oh, oh, keep going. A million to one didn't happen until we got back. I can tell you all the songs that happened when we got back. Okay. Uh, give, give me more. Young and Wasted. Not for the well, what, what, Give me some more titles. Yeah, um, Exciter. Um, yeah, keep going. Um, I'm just going down the album. So it goes Exciter, Not for the Innocent, Lick It Up, Young and Wasted, Give Me More. All Hell's Breaking Loose, A Million to One, Fits Like a Glove. Okay, A Million to One I wrote in the basement of my parents' uh, my parents' house on okay. Garfield Avenue in Bridgeport. Okay. I remember writing just about the whole song. Hmm. Um, Lick It Up we wrote when we got back to New York. All Hell's Breaking Loose we wrote, back, we wrote when we got back to New York. We started working on Exciter. But it was called a song called it was called You. Yep, I remember. Yep. <laughs> Which you know, when you're when you're beginning together, you kind of just throw words together just to see how it just just gel something. Um, Paul and I were doing a lot of the writing. I just can't remember what songs we were working on. Um, it, it'll come to me, I, it, you know, because I, I would document everything. Like I said, I recorded yep. everything on 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 cassette tape. Uh, good question. Let me let me come back to that and see what the tapes, what what the cassette tapes <laughs> sure. say. I'll go. I'll go and look at the dates on them and see what uh, what we were working on at that point. That that'd be awesome. But uh, that'd be, you know, a couple of other uh, questions. It, it was still fun. You know, I just wanted to be. In, I was in Rio. I didn't want to be writing songs. I remember in a re, in a hotel room. I wanted <laughs> you to go out. out and go sightseeing. You know. Yeah, absolutely. You know, a couple of other uh, questions, if you don't mind, about the tour. One of the things I always loved when I, you know, years ago when I didn't know as much as I do now about the tour, I saw you with pictures with a bow, and then I saw the bootleg videos and your guitar player, uh, your guitar solo, you're playing with a bow. How did that come about? Did you do that before you were in Kiss? Mm, no. No. Nope. So creatures it all was the first came time about you did that? during during all of that, and I don't even remember how it came about. <laughs> okay. Uh, Interesting. I don't remember how it came about. Um, oh, shit, boy, I don't remember. Okay. Um, I, I remember. Uh, I, I, I actually remember having some kind of fascination with it early, earlier, mm-hmm. um, and I, I somehow, either through suggestion, I don't remember how it happened, but uh, it could have been. Why don't you try a bow? Hey, why well, you ever try a bow? I said, fuck, I, I remember loving that whole thing. Mm-hmm. And I think that's how, that was kind of the way it happened. And 
And then it got to be rehearsal, and I, you know, I'm going, gee, this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I was going to try to, uh, I, I was going to hope to to do something at uh, the Christmas party, but you know, we, we never have enough time to do anything, and sure. it was just, you know, two days went by so fast, you know, and uh, I wanted to jam with more of the fans. And we never just never got around to, to doing everything I had planned to do. Yep. So we're doing the, the uh, Valentine's party and all the shows that I'm going to do from here on, we're going to start on Friday night, yep. you know, because we, we need, I, I need more time to do all this stuff that I want to do. But uh, the bow was one of them, the violin bow, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I was Man, thought, I love playing with. Yeah, to I that, love that thing. I, mean, I was having a great time with that thing on stage. Yeah, it, it was. Oh, to me, it was very cool. You know, another thing from the Creatures tour, and I'm assuming you brought this in. The ending of Black Diamond changed from that tour. Even on the end of the road, now they they play it with. I'll say the modified ending. The dent, 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 dent. Did you bring that into the band? That's it. Did you bring uh, that in? The, the, the Bex Bolero. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. Uh, <laughs> that was the moment where, you know, and this is, yeah. Yeah, that was the moment where you went, yeah, that, now <laughs> we're making a statement here, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Is that what you wanted to ask me about yeah. the Bex Bolero thing? Yeah, or yeah. Did you have a question no. you wanted to ask about well, it? I was, I was assuming it was the Beck song Bolero that was the influence of that. But did you bring that to the band, or was that somebody else's idea? Or was that you? Oh boy, don't, don't it's hard to pin me down, okay. you know, just because it's so much. I don't know who brought it. I don't know if it ever was. I don't know if I I did it. I I, I just don't remember. Mm -hmm. But it was something. If if it happened. It's something I think I would have naturally brought, naturally, because Jeff Beck had been my, uh, you know, he was my Bible all my life, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it probably would have been natural for me to bring it. I can't remember, to be honest. Fair enough, fair enough. You know, talking about um, the tour and whatever, just a little tidbit for you. 37 years ago today, you guys were in New Orleans. And you guys are doing <laughs> 37, years. 37 years ago Is today. All, huh? Yes, there's 37 <laughs> years ago today. And you actually did a record store appearance first where you guys met fans and signed autographs. Um, that seemed to be something. I remember did quite that. Yeah. 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 So I thought that was kind of like a neat thing. <laughs> um, New one... Orleans. Wow. <laughs> I remember that. We played at the Superdome. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. That's 100% right? right. Am I right? You are 100% correct. Yes. Yes. And I also remember a TV show called Entertainment Tonight did yes. a piece on us. Yep, they absolutely. I Am I right? You are, you are correct. I have the clip in my collection. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what was that girl's name who did? Too? She was a... Uh, what the hell was her name? That I don't uh, remember. <laughs> she was, a good, she was uh, the woman that did all the, the Entertainment Tonight she, pieces you know i, I can't i can't, can't can't remember yeah um yeah yeah i remember that very well very I well I see, yeah. I um and i remember that we had mardi gras yep uh coins yep mardi you did. gras coins that's correct yep yep i've got one did about... we have it right am i yes, right you're 100 percent right i've got one about 20... hey, okay it is it is right yep i got one about um, 20 feet from me right now actually yep <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and these these coins—they were like the size of sil silver dollars, exactly. Yep. I think. Yep. Yep. And uh, they were uh, they were stamped with that. There was there was like a group picture of us, and yep. uh, it was a common picture I used to see on posters quite a bit mm -hmm. in that day. Yep. Yep. Uh, but you know what? As strange as it seems, I was only in Kiss for a year and a half. I know that. Yep. And and yet that year and a half became a real timeless piece of history, you know, and, and an important era of, of 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 Kiss history. I don't know. It's it's it's, it's indelible. It is. It lasts forever. The images are, you know, they're powerful, and the music was, I think, turned the band into a different kind of a band, you know. Mm -hmm. yep. So. 
it would seem like I was in that band for, for, you know, 10 years. You know, it's surprising how, how, uh, short of a time, uh, I was in actually in the band, you know? Yeah. But I think so for so many fans looking at 18 months and yeah. that was it, you yeah. know? Yeah, but I think for so many fans... Is that strange to you? Because that... It is. It is when you think that's about really it. really surprising to me when you really look at the whole impact of, of that era and how it's just carried itself and, and perpetuated the image and the power of all these years later. Yep. And yet I was only in the band for, for 18 months. And what's even more stunning is that the Creatures tour stiffed. It was a complete mm -hmm. bomb, a complete failure. I don't think, I don't even think we did 40 shows, maybe 40. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be a 100 show tour, uh, but we weren't drawing an audience. I don't know where it ended. I can't remember the last show, but I remember it got caught real short. I think it was in the United and, States. Um, I think it was San Francisco. Pardon me? I said, I think in the U.S. it was San Francisco in like April of 83, if I remember right. Well, you know more than I do. <laughs> uh, you know, the fans know a lot more mm -hmm. about the, the little minutiae yep. than I do. Yep. I, I don't really quite remember it all. But, um, yeah, I do remember that it didn't last very long. So if you just took my, the just the total time that I was... In, the, in in for the creatures tour in that uh, um, version of kiss at that time I don't think it was six to eight weeks maybe the most say eight weeks maybe mm -hmm. that was it yep. you know yep. so for an eight week period of time what a what fucking a impact that made, that made for, for for decades later yep. and, it, and, it, and in my opinion yeah, the impact gets bigger and greater as each year goes by. For some reason, you know, I don't know what, but there was some fascination that that had is is was born during that little period of time. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you, Vinny. You know, so only you could tell me if I'm right or wrong because I'm I'm giving you my my opinion, which is completely my own, and you know, well, I'll, I'll I don't tell you why I think you're right. Else is but am I right? Well, I'll tell you why I think you're right, right? So I'm still a KISS fan to this day. I go on all the KISS cruises they do on an annual basis. And this is the 10th one they're doing this year. And only twice of the first nine did they bring back a theme from a prior tour. Once was KISS Alive and the other one was Creatures of the Night. And they brought back like a miniature tank and they redid that stage and tried to somewhat recreate the Creatures of the Night feel on the cruise for the people who hadn't really lived through that or maybe seen it back in 82, 83. So that says something if that's one of the two that they decided to bring back. So I, I think most KISS fans would agree with you. To me, it was a magical time for the band, even though it was not the most successful time for the band. Yeah, but uh, without... Without the real Vinnie Vincent, you know, <laughs> it could only be so, it, was, it only could be so, so, you know, so good, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, well, you know, you know, you're doing tributes or tributes and I get it, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. but. Um, and it amazes me that the American tour didn't do any better because you guys had some great support acts, whether it was Motley Crue. Night Ranger, the Plasmatics. You guys had a bunch of good support in X with you, but I guess it just wasn't the right time for the band for whatever reason. And it wasn't, the interest wasn't there. It was uh, MTV had just begun, um, you know, new bands had come out, and, you know, the, the original members of KISS were gone, and it was, it was passe and, you know, makeup just, you know, it was not a part of the new decade. Yep. That's how I looked at it. Did you guys ever you talk know? about doing another video we have to look it up? Maybe one with you in it or no? There was uh, All Hell's Breaking Loose was the next video. No, that was from Lick It Up. But, anything, from, uh, anything from Creatures? No, no. It was an abysmal failure mm -hmm. of an album and a tour. And there was no support from the label that I remember. Yep. 
You know, I was not on the inside part of the business. I was was uh, uh, an employee, so um, just a hired, you know, side person. But uh, I don't remember ever talking about a video past I Love It Loud for that album. Right. Right. And, um, you know, here, like I said, here we are, like you said, what, 37 years later. Yeah. And and it still is a very, very uh, important era, and it's it's got a lot of mystique to it. It has, has a lot of imagery, and it was a, still a great album that you can still put on today, and you got all of these videos of those shows. And magically, you got the video, the, the Rio video. Absolutely. And when I say magically, because that captured creatures, the creatures era at its best, at its finest moment, in my opinion. Yep. Yep. No, I, now I can, I don't know what ver, what quality tapes, what quality uh, recordings are actually out out there of the Rio show, but um, you know that that captured the band at its best, yeah. you know, at that time. Yep, a TV, a TV station there actually filmed it, and there's a lot of really good professional footage of it. So um, Kiss fans uh, love it, yeah. It, I, it, I, I, would, oh, I would totally believe that. Yeah. And I remember there was something like that happening. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we, it was, a, it was a, uh, the potential that, that the band had was uh, enormous. Yep. Just enormous. We could have gone on to conquer many worlds, Absolutely. in my opinion. Is there anything else related to the Creatures album, the recording, the writing, the touring that you wanted to talk about today, Vin? Uh, today, uh, what happens when I do interviews, especially in these in-depth things, mm-hmm. I won't think of it at the time, but you know, maybe tonight. You know, <laughs> when, uh, I live a very unstructured life, so... Yep. You know, I'll sleep two hours here, an hour here, and whatever, and then I'll be shredding all night long. And <laughs> while I'm doing one of these unconventional things that I do, I'll say, ah, oh, we should have covered that. Ah, oh, shit, I missed that. We should have talked about that. But that's how it is, you know. Yeah. So at the moment, I can't think. Uh, it's hard. It's just hard, you know, because there, there was so much. There was it was just so much, you know, from uh, the creatures thing. From it was actually, you know, how how fast it became lick it up mm-hmm. was really the next. That, that's the thing that's really fascinating. So next one, next one would be lick it up, and we'll take the segue from. A lightning speed from creatures to lick it up. <laughs> mm-hmm. It became within within literally within two weeks. Absolutely. So when well, next time we'll cover it all. But uh, did I show you the 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 original Polaroids? Did you? I had them there at, at the, the um, Vinnie Vincent Mary Metal Christmas. I had them there. Did you see that? Yes, I did. Did the, I show them? Show yeah, them to you? Yep, yep. There was about fifteen Polaroids there of um. You know, different times when you first joined yep. the band. I thought they were amazing pictures. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Um, I've got a lot of original stuff from the mm-hmm. Creatures Tour that's totally amazing. Um, I, as, as strange as it seems, I take a lot of mementos of, uh, you know, the moments. And I took home, as strange as it's, as small as it is, it's still... To, to this day, it is special, you know, in its own little way to me. But mm-hmm. um, I, remember I remember taking one of his guitar picks and two of my my own guitar picks. Mm-hmm. Actually, I took three home with me. I gave one to Steve, uh, my, my best friend here in the world, the greatest guy I have ever known, Steve Wilkie, my mm-hmm. assistant, I gave him one, and uh, I took two two guitar picks home, two Kiss guitar picks with Vinny Vincent on on them. Mm-hmm. Took three of those home. I gave Steve one, and uh, I kept the other two, and I took one of Gene's picks home with me. 
Nice. That you know th- those white ones that said kiss on yeah. one side and our signature on the other, mm-hmm. and uh, it was like my little my little souvenir of of the moment. You know, mm-hmm. I still have them. That's so awesome. Absolutely, that's so awesome. <laughs> In its own way, it's awesome. You know. No, I think it is. I, I think it's. I look. I collect all that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Huh? And I wasn't in the band, so I think that's really cool. <laughs> it's definitely cool. It's got my, you know, my my string slide in in you know in, indentations. Mm-hmm. You know, when you slide your pick down the string, and you're just it's chewed up, and you know, it's got all those string indentations in the pick. Sure. And uh, you know, I some some stuff I just I said I'm keeping this. Mm-hmm. You know, it's yep. for for. For the memento, from the for the memory of it, but uh, uh, you to- total total uh, a, t- a total picture, you mm-hmm. know the mm-hmm. final re- the final makeup shows were the best, you know. So and and we left we left it at that. Mm-hmm. So and I, and I think if if I were to be proud of anything, it's that the final. The final shows were the best, and we, in my opinion, of how I viewed where we had come, I thought, hell, we got to be a great band, one hell of a powerhouse band by the time we hit Brazil. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, though, all those shows in Brazil and uh, Sao Paulo Paulo and uh, Belo Horizonte and Rio they said, you know, this, you know, kiss, kiss came and kiss conquered, mm-hmm. you know, so. No, absolutely. And, you know, for kiss yeah. fans, yeah, for kiss fans, that was almost the end of an era because after that tour, yeah. a lot yeah. of the songs from the, songs from the 70s started to get dropped, started whether it was dropped. Calling Dr. Love. Love. God of Thunder. Oh, so. I, I didn't hear you because you were garbled. What did you say there? Yeah, I said for a lot of Kiss fans, that was also an end of an era. Besides the makeup coming off, they started to drop a lot of the 70s songs, whether it was God of Thunder, Shout Out Loud, Calling Dr. Love, I Want You. A lot of those songs never got performed for a decade or more hey, after that. There, there, there's a, something that we didn't touch on. Yeah. Interesting. The song list. Yes, yes. Song list. Very, very... Very uh, missing piece of the discussion, but all those songs that were part of the set list, mm-hmm. they were they were songs from past eras, you yep. know. Yeah. And how did you feel and, playing uh, those songs? How did I feel? You know, they were just songs that I didn't know. Mm-hmm. I had no idea what. I, I never listened to a Kiss album mm-hmm. in my life, and I didn't like them. So. Mm-hmm. To me, it was just learning a song, and that's it. And try to play the leads like like Ace did. And okay, okay, I'll do my best. And then that was it. Mm-hmm. And uh, and but then, you know, you know, fine. It was uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, we're good. Oh, no, I got it. I'm doing. I I get it. I I know how the song goes and. Mm-hmm. You know, for people that lived Kiss, it was different for them. For me, I didn't, so I was just learning a song. But uh, I get it. You know, um, there was a lot. Of, there was a few songs I loved. Um, did we? I think we did, did. Oh man, did we do? What the Doc, Doctor Love? Right, we yes. did Doctor Love. Yes, you did on the Creatures Tour. Um, loved. I loved that song. Okay. You know, it was one of one of June's really good ones. I loved mm-hmm. I love that song. I love Christine Sixteen. Mm-hmm. Um, there were some songs I actually did love. Okay. Um, and and you know the ones we rehearsed. Uh, you know, it was just the ones we played were the ones I wasn't really familiar with that I learned. Mm-hmm. But it, I'll tell you what. Bottom line, it was a ball. You know, every show was fun, and. Uh, you know, every show was really a lot of fun, and uh, uh, that's the part I do remember about it. But it sounds like you, you know, would have preferred like to. Th- yeah, you you probably um, would have preferred to do more songs from the Creatures of the Night album. It sounds like. I'm sorry. What was that? It sounds like you would have preferred to do more songs from the Creatures of the Night album in concert, 
as opposed no, to... No, it didn't matter to didn't me. Matter okay. Honestly, it didn't matter. Okay. Interesting. No, it didn't matter. I just thought, you know, it, 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 it's all just one big happy bunch of party songs, and they were fun to play. And, uh, you know, it was just, it was just, uh, uh, it was just fun to be playing those kinds of songs because they were just, you know, they, they were just, like I said, they were just kind of party songs Mm -hmm. and they were all good party songs. So I, I eventually my ear, remember when I started this conversation, I said I wasn't a fan because my ear was not tuned to this sound. Mm -hmm. But after being in the band, my ear then became tuned to what we sounded like, and and it started to sound natural to me, and I started to really enjoy it. So, you know, it was just uh, just kind of a, a changing of the guard in one way, you know, or another, but... uh by the time we were doing it, it was, I mean, hey, this is great. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like this, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. having a good time, you know. Awesome. Very cool. Well, Ben, I think that was all the questions I had for you on Creatures. I think, like you said, maybe we could do this again for Lick It Up. Maybe we could pick it up while you oh, guys. Yeah, man, I got, I got stories for you, Mikey, that uh, are, are are really good. Yeah. You I... know, they're very informative, very, uh, you know, uh, a lot of secrets, a lot of, but good stuff, you know, not, awesome. not, not nasty things, you know, but good things that a lot of people don't know. Yeah. And, uh, I think this kind of maybe might've filled in some of the missing, uh, missing pieces and, you know, helped, help the, uh, storyline a little bit more for you oh, and for the listeners. Yeah, what do you think? No, I think his fans and Vinnie Vincent fans are going to love this. A lot of great information that I learned some new things today, whether it's, you know, rehearsing in Dallas. I never knew about that beforehand. Some of the songwriting stories was really cool. Um, hearing that you rec- you wrote I Love It Loud in Diana Ross's house is pretty cool to me. So um, I think his fans are You know, I did say this. I remember saying this to you at the, um, at the, at the Christmas party. Yeah. But Lick It Up was the, was the song, you know, as, as everybody knows. And I don't know if, if how many people really remember, uh, you know, how many people heard the the interview at the Christmas party. But um, when we start doing the Lick It Up, um, you know, interview, mm-hmm. there's, there's a lot of interesting facts that happened during that, during the writing of that album and recording. So... Uh, yeah, Mikey, I'm I'm picking you as my uh, <laughs> my emissary to bring to bring the good the good uh, articles out to the good interviews out to everybody. Well, no, I definitely look forward to sharing those stories with everybody, and I look forward to hearing those stories from you, Vin. Excellent, Mikey. It was beautiful, and uh, am I seeing you at the Valentine's party show? I'm still not sure yet. It's my wife's birthday that weekend, literally that weekend. Um, so oh, man, don't you think you should be taking your wife to like you know a uh, Vinnie Valentine's party? Her and I are talking about. <laughs> hey, it. wait a minute! Did I? Isn't there a picture of me with your wife back in 1988 yes, and a couple there of is. other girls? I saw this picture yes. out there. Is that is that your wife in there? Yes, my wife's on the far right in that picture, and that was about five months before I met her. So I often joke with her that she, Vinnie Vincent, met my wife before I did. <laughs> that's great yeah but that's well, actually you know, what friends, better yeah. way to, to spend your anniversary right than that's just come right. down and hang and, and 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 party with with me and uh you know absolutely yep we're and seeing, anyway yep. So we're seeing what if we you work come out. bring her you know we'll absolutely. celebrate it together and uh if you don't uh i wish you my love and all the best uh in life always and all the good stuff, Mike. Thank you, Vin. And you know, my friend Vincent that came with me to the Christmas party told me to say hello to you as well. So I just want to pass that along. Hey, he did a, he did a, uh, tell Vin, Vinny I said hi, Vincent. Uh, Vinny, Vincent. Tell <laughs> Vincent I said hi and uh, tell him he ripped it up on, lick it up. Yep. <laughs> and he, he tore the place up, man. He did a great job. Absolutely. I'll pass that on to him. Thanks a lot, Vin. I appreciate it. No, jamming it. with the fans yeah. is actually a lot of fun. I'm actually enjoying this. 
Yeah, to me that was so, the highlight. That was the highlight of the weekend. I actually enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. So I'm thinking, hey man, this is this is fun. Look look at how much look at how look at everybody who's up there playing, man. They, this is like the fantasy of of a lot of fans, and we're getting to do it together. You know, oh, so yeah. a lot more of that to come. And uh, anyway, Mikey, God bless and. Uh, Long life, be happy, uh, give your wife my best, and, uh, you know, congratulations, happy anniversary, all that, that good stuff. And uh, if you come, I'd be happy. If you don't, <laughs> I'll, I won't be happy, but <laughs> we'll make it work. I'll okay? catch you one the next way one, or, or, or the other, okay? <laughs> Sounds great. Thanks a lot, Ben. Talk to you soon. Okay, Mike. See you Take soon. Easy. Give All my right. love to everybody, okay? Will do. Thanks, Vin. Have a good one. Okay. Have a good one. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, my friend. See you. Bye. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed my exclusive interview with Vinny Vincent, talking all things Creatures of the Night. Please take a moment, hit that subscribe button on my YouTube channel, and also head on over to my Facebook page, The Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brunn, and follow me there where each and every day we talk about all the rock and roll music that you love. Thanks for listening, everybody. Till next time, see ya.